And let's talk more about the effect of a single vaccine dose with Dr. Georges Benjamin. He's the executive director at the American Public Health Association here in Washington, D.C. Well, the U.S. for now is sticking to the two-shot guidance for, for everyone. Do you think that's wise given supply issues? Thanks, Roy. It's good for having me with you. You know, the, the problem you have when you start changing based on just one or two studies uh, is that you really don't understand what will happen in the out years. One of the concerns is about the durability of those findings, meaning how long the um, protection will last. So I think right now that's a, a good plan for us to stick with the original plan that we had based on the science that we knew. But this is really exciting new information. And once we are have broad consensus about what it really will do, maybe we can change. But right now, we need to fix our supply problem. Because at the end of the day, even if we can accelerate and only use one dose, we will still have a supply problem. The inoculations are happening across the country in tier systems determined at state and county levels. Those don't take into account who's had COVID-19 when deciding who qualifies for vaccination, correct? That's correct. And the reason is it's still not clear but how protective natural infection is. The same problem we're having with the single vaccine debate. Joe Biden has now been president for one month. Uh, how much of what has changed has been a direct result of his actions and policies as opposed to simply the evolution of time? You know, leadership matters. And I've been practicing emergency medicine through most of my early medical practice. And what I learned is all about leadership. And what we're seeing now is a unified national response. And so this response is because of good management, plus the fact we've been able to scale up the response we had before. Health officials are telling people that we should prepare for COVID-19 to become endemic over the next few years. What might that look like? It may look like um, the common cold, where we'll have little outbreaks, and the public health community will have to, you know, chase it around doing testing, contact tracing, isolation, and containment. I think the way to think about this is periodic measles outbreaks that occur all over the world. There is a growing push here in the U.S. to get children back into schools and places where they still aren't. What are some of the pros and cons, and, and where do you fall? Well, we absolutely need to get our kids back to school. Um, and what um, school systems are trying to balance, the harm for keeping kids at home, and particularly the long-term loss of educational, and the risk of getting infected. So we need to get our kids back to school, but we also need to vaccinate our teachers. Dr. Georges Benjamin, uh, thank you so much for your insight, as always. Thank you.